Hey everybody out there, it's Matt, and I uh, hope everyone's having a good weekend and Sunday. Hope all the dads are having a good Father's Day out there. And I'm checking in with yet another Paul McCartney in order of release album review, which brings us to June 4th of 2007 when Memory Almost Full came out. Actually came out on June 5th in the U.S., but June 4th in the U.K., so there is the album. I'm not going to take it out of the uh, plastic sleeve there because it's a pain to get it back in. This actually is kind of a weird album cover because it folds out into a big giant poster of it's been quite a while since I've opened it up, but I think it looks something like that, or maybe it's that. I don't remember, but I do remember that it's a big pain in the rear end to get it back in this plastic sleeve so I'm not going to reopen it right now. This is the um, CD copy of it which I got in 2007. Picked up the vinyl um, later and so here is the um, vinyl inner sleeve. Got the lyrics, got lyrics and a picture of Paul and uh, somewhere here the record this was uh, on the Hear Music Starbucks label, so I think he's back on Capitol now. I'm not sure. I don't think he's on the Starbucks label anymore, but uh, so yeah, this uh, 2007 did pretty well. Got to number three in the United States, got to number five in England. Uh, I think, I don't know how well it sold overall or how long it stayed on this charts, but at least it charted pretty well. Awful cover, one of his worst covers for an album by him. Uh, this and Wings of the Speed of Sound, I guess, would probably be in the running for his worst album cover, I would think. But maybe it's sort of, a, as you get old, life is like an old easy chair. I don't know, because there's a lot of stuff on this album that's kind of reflective and looking back on life and looking towards the inevitable end of life. But, um, yeah, not a good cover. But it's a great album, and um, we'll just get into the songs. I would uh, dare say that had this album come out in, say, 1977, it would have been a number one hit. It would have spawned three or four hit singles, and it would be just as beloved now and just as known now as... Band on the Run, Ram, Venus and Mars, Tug of War, all those Paul albums that the general public knows, and uh, unfortunately, very few people know of these later day albums than other than just hardcore Beatle fans, and these things aren't very well remembered or weren't much paid attention to at the time. And I'm thinking that the fact that it's got to number three and to number five meant that a lot of the Beatle people ran out and bought it. I don't know how well known this is to the general public. And it's a shame because late in life he had this big resurgence and he did some really good albums. And uh, I would also dare say as good at albums as they are, uh, Chaos and Creation and Flaming Pie, I like this one better than either of those. And I like those, so I'm not putting them down. And maybe technically those are better albums, but this is a lot more enjoyable. This is a lot more fun and just a lot more, uh, just more better. So let's get into the songs. The, the first song on side one is Dance Tonight, which was the lead single all over the world, except for the U.S. There, it was a single in the U.S., but it was the second single in the U.S. Um, Chaos opened with kind of a catchy pop song called A Fine Line, which was a fine song, but sort of a slight song. Uh, that didn't really go anywhere, even though it's a pretty nice song. Dance Tonight isn't the deepest song in the world either, but it's a great song. It's a much better uh, classic McCartney single that, unfortunately, I think it got to number 26 in England and only number 69 in America. It's a shame. Uh, it's got the mandolin. It's just a happy, upbeat dance song. I think he wrote it for his, uh, his daughter, Beatrice, who would have been two or three at the time. Just a classic McCartney single that unfortunately never was, but should have been. And it was a single, but it wasn't. It's not a well-known song, really. Great song, and it starts the album off with a 10. I love that song. 
Second song, side one, is uh, Ever Present Past. This is um, Paul looking back on his life, some Beatle references, some references to being a kid and growing up. I love the line where, uh, talking about when he was a little kid and the grown-ups, I couldn't understand the words they were saying, but I took it all in. Didn't join the games they were playing. It flew by so fast. Just reminds me sort of of being a little kid and you know, grown-ups around. I remember my parents and friends coming over to play cards and stuff on, uh, you know, the weekend, canasta and bridge and all that, and just the, the grown-ups hanging out and the kids running around playing and I know, it just gives me that feeling. It's a great song musically, too. I give it an 8.5, so pretty solid start to this album. Song number three is See Your Sunshine, which is, uh, I think it's a love song to his uh, horrible second wife, Kickstand, or Heather. Uh, he recorded this album, actually, I think from like 203 to 207. So he recorded this album some songs for this and then he kind of put those aside and went and made chaos and creation and then came back to this album and added some more songs so this covers a wide span of the time when he was married to Hel horrible heather and when they went through their divorce and all so it kind of the whole spectrum of that um, uh, ill-fated uh, love affair that he had with her there but this is a Still, this is a great love song, uh, her aside. It's, it's, uh, I love the, the part about the picks up daisies in the field where the music changes tempos. It's just a great kind of rocking ballad love song. I'm going to give it an 8.8. .8. It's a good song. Now we get to Only Mama Knows, which was not a single but should have been a single and should have been a number one hit. Great, great song, great rock and roll song. I love the way that it begins and ends with the classical music, kind of movie theme music that plays into the song, and then the guitar takes off. Just, uh, just, uh, just singing and shouting. He's in good voice throughout this song and throughout the whole album, for what it's worth. Uh, just a nice, great rock and roll song. Should have been a single. It gets a 10 as well. Great song. You Tell Me is um, another sort of ballad about him thinking about the past. Uh, just a good, pleasant, solid ballad. It gets an eight. I love uh, kind of like the way the last note of the song just sort of snips off, gets cut off. Kind of reminds me of um, uh, I Want You So She's So Heavy on Abbey Road where it sounds like someone pulled the plug out of your stereo because the music just ends. It's not that abrupt, but it's sort of, if you listen to the last fade out note it just sort of cuts off it's kind of neat i like it mr bellamy love 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 it it gets a 10 i'll say right ahead i know a lot of people don't like this much but i've always loved this song love the piano love the different voices love the flute or the recorder that plays through it the harpsichord uh kind of a reminds me of uncle albert Admiral Halsey, one of those type songs where Paul's sort of doing this little mini vignette movie of someone. I uh, love the swirly jazz that plays out at the end of the song that sort of reminds me of the music that plays out at the end of Magical Mystery Tour, the, the song Magical Mystery Tour. Just, uh, I love it. I mean, I, I'm giving it a 10, like I said. It's another great song. Should have been a single as well. Should have been a number one hit as well. And that was not a single. I think there only was two singles from this album, which was uh, Dance Tonight and Never Present Past. And Never Present Past was released in the U.S. first and England and the rest of the world second. Dance was released uh, first everywhere in the U.S. and U.S. second. Gratitude's another song that starts side two. That's sort of be um, sort of a snide breakup ode to Heather Mills or whatever her name was. And uh, a lot of people, I've heard people don't really like that song much. I like it. I think there's a lot of interesting stuff going on there musically. may not be the strongest song on the album, but it's still pretty good. It's good enough to get an eight from me. And um, so we go into the second song on side two, Vintage Clothes, which uh, at first, a um, few hears, few hears, few listens to this, it was kind of a... Uh, didn't do much for me, but it's a grower, and I um, got to uh, 
the more I heard it, the more I liked it. I love the cool time changes. I like the whistling in it. Uh, what's new is old again is sort of the theme that, you know. So, uh, great song. Gets an 8.8 .8 from me, Vintage Clothes. That Was Me is another Paul McCartney trip through his past. And he would have been, I don't know, 60-something. I could have done the math before I started the video, but he would have been in his 60s when this came out in 207. So it obviously that time of life when you're looking back at things. Uh, love the um, bop, bop, ba, da, ba, da, I can't do it, but the scat singing in the middle of it. Another great song, another 10 on this album. Feet in the Clouds is just a lazy passing the time of day type song. Nice harpsichord, like the... Um, sort of ELO um, bit at the end with the, you know, the, I don't know, computer voice or whatever. It is kind of cool. Uh, 9.5 feet in the cloud, just a nice solid uh, kind of ballad. Great song. House of Wax was uh, probably my least favorite on the album, but uh, it's still a pretty strong song and I like it. There's, there's not a bad song on this album. And uh, it's good enough to get an eight. Like the Pink Floyd sounding guitar in there and some parts of it. Um, but yeah, I give it an eight. And the album ends with Nod Your Head. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We got Into the End, which is a depressing subject matter, but mainly upbeat music to deliver it. And it's Paul McCartney thinking about his mortality and his death and the fact that he's not going to be there um, in the future. Yeah, not an easy song to listen to because you don't like the thought of Paul not being around and especially the fact that he was 60 when he made this what uh, 11 years ago and so he's 70 something now and we've lost you know in between then we've lost so many additional Prince and David Bowie and so forth so it's not the most uh, cheerful thing to think about but I mean you gotta credit him for being realistic I guess and the fact that he's saying, you know, I had a good run, and when I'm gone, celebrate the music and be happy. Um, he brings up, you know, I'm going to a better place, which sort of makes you wonder about his take on religion, which is seems like it's sort of varied through the years, same as John's did. So, um, not a really fun song to listen to, but a sobering song and a good song. Uh, and... Um, I mean, yeah, I got to give it to not a nine. And a lot of times when I play this album, I'll skip it, but it's still a good song. Nod Your Head ends the album, and uh, just uh, love nasty stinging guitar. Got that sort of uh, orchestration bit in it that reminds you of Live and Let Die a little bit. Paul's just shouting and having fun and going out in style on the album. And not another slight song, but a great song. I give it a 10, so that that ends the album on a 10. And I don't know what's that, four or five songs that get a 10 on that. So, like I said, this is um, one that really most people don't know unless they're big-time Beatle fans. And the general public pretty much lost interest in Paul and solo Beatle solo Paul stuff, probably Tug of War, or maybe Flaming Pie, and it's a shame because there's been good things, a lot of good things since then, and this, I would argue, is his best album since Tug of War, we've got uh, three or four more albums to go, so we'll see if he does anything else as good as this, but you'll have to stay tuned to see about that, but uh, I'm not saying this is Revolver or Rubber Soul, none of the solo Beatles albums are up in that category even though a lot of them are great. But it's good enough that it gets a 9.9 .9 from me. And um, this rates up there among his classic 70s and early 80s solo albums that, that the general public knew, and uh, of course the Beatle fans too. So 9.9 .9 I'm giving this. This has, uh, <clears throat> like all these recent albums, a lot of bonus cuts, b-sides and so forth that didn't end up on the album. Not quite as many as the recent albums that had six or seven or so, but this has three of them. And um, actually it has four because there is a um, acoustic version of Dance Tonight 
And then there's another deluxe package that came out that has some live material of just older songs. But um, the three songs that um, didn't show up on the album, one is called Why So Blue. Uh, it's nice. I'm going to give it a six. Second one is called In Private, which is a instrumental thing, which sounds like it would not be out of place on the McCartney album, the, his first solo album. It's also nice, but no great shakes. I'm going to give that a six. Uh, two 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 or two twenty two is a <clears throat> is a kind of jazzy experimental, slightly avant garde piece. Uh, has a nice piano and parts of it that remind me of Vince Guaraldi, the guy that did the music for the Charlie Brown Christmas specials and the other Charlie Brown specials, Linus and Lucy and all that. Uh, other little odd bits. This wouldn't have been out of place on his next album, which we'll get to, or uh, maybe on one of his Fireman al earlier Fireman albums. Uh, I give that one a seven. So this is, uh, in the other cases, the last three or so albums, there are a lot of these B-sides that were, in a lot of cases, better or just as good as the stuff that was on the regular album should have been on them. These things, I mean, you got a six, a six, and a seven. Two, two, two is the most interesting of the bunch. So probably is best that those were B-sides and not on the album because if they were, I think they would have diluted the album a little bit. As it is, this is one of his best, and um, it's a great, great album, I think, and a great late-life triumph for Paul McCartney. If you don't have it, run out and buy it. It's worth getting. I'll be back with... Um, next McCartney album review whenever I'm back. So have a good Sunday, have a good Father's Day, and hope all is well.